Hi, my name is Dr. Chen from the B2B Vertical Team within the ITS organization. And today I'm going to demo our capability to automatically create a process to take hierarchical data and create a, out of it a, a, the, the relational equivalent for it. While doing so, it will allow you to model the relational data based on uh, your specific requirements. Let's first understand the challenge. Consider this um, XML via rightful data. It is of, a, um, of the Accord domain, and Accord is a very large and complex XML. It has different complexities that uh, are defined within its XSVs, whether it is the structure or the richness of the of the XSV um, language that it is using. It is very, very complex. And the task in hand is to be able to do, let's say, data warehousing of a cord where you don't necessarily have a data model um, within the database of the structure that you would like to create. So in other words, you want to take everything within the Accord message, and you don't really have a data model for it yet. So the first uh, task would be to um, create a data model of the structure that you would like to have in your database, as well as to be able to deal with the millions of elements that um, reside within the Accord. As you can see in this case, we just show you quickly the size of the, uh, of the problem. Because this insurance service request slide contains multiple domains, multiple types of policies, you don't know which one are you going to use necessarily, but you know that you would like to keep each and every one of them within your uh, data warehouse. Before moving on, it is um, assumed that we understand that in the DT world, any type of data that you have, whether it's uh, already in an XML format or not, can be represented as some XML. So if you have EPA message or EDI message, you can represent it with an XML. And for, that, for those specific cases where it's a standard in, that exists in the market, we probably already have the XSD for it so that that could be your starting point. The process we have is built out of uh, two steps. Both of them were implemented within DT. And the idea is that step number one will take the XSD representing the XML that you would like to create data model for or you would like to do data warehousing projects with, and you will create some sort of an Excel representing the information within that. How many structures are defined within that XSD? how many uh, repetitions each structure has, how many fields each one of those structures has, so that it would give you the ability to decide which one do you want to create a table for and what would be the cost of it. The cost is important because if you think of the process of taking everything within a court, we are talking about millions of, um, of uh, potential fields which means millions of potential ports within a power center mapping, and that could be a challenge by itself. The first process is going to generate the Excel. So let me just quickly run that. And what this process takes as an input, it is simply a file list pointing to all the XSDs representing the data that you would like to create in the process for. When the process is done, what it really creates 
in our two files. One of them is this out.xls, and the other one is called step1.xml. Step1.xml contains all the metadata information that we captured from the XSD within an XML file, and the Excel is the one that I'm going to show you now. The Excel file contains um, all the structures that the XSDs had within them so that you can make a decision on which one do you want to create a table for and which ones you maybe want to completely ignore and not do anything with. Um, and the, and the, the main thing for you to consider are those two properties at the bottom. If you will take every object within the, that was the, found within the XSD it, and create a table for it, the number of tables will be huge. As well as if you will decide to add a single table and have all, everything as a colon underneath that table, the number of lists would be huge as well. So it's a fine balance between the option of a, a creating a single table versus creating multiple tables. The, the business analyst or the data modeler can then go and make a decision by switching the flags on whether he wants a, a, a table to be or a structure to be a, a, a global one, which means that it will create a table for it, and he can potentially eliminate the entire structure and say, I don't even want to deal with the data that comes within it. Maybe I want to completely uh, um, ignore it. And by doing so, you will see that it will change the uh, number of tables, obviously, and, and also the number of colons that we will have at the end of the day, or the number of um, ports that we will have. <coughs> In this specific case, I'm trying to make everything um, appear as um, appear as a, 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 to make all the tables, all the objects as no table except for the main table, which is the root element in this case, the Accord XML. And I'll just add one more table over here so that there are really two tables and remove all the circular definitions over here. And you'll see that right now I have a definition of two tables, but the number of lists, because I'm using just two tables, grew to somewhere around three million, three and a half million. But since this is not going to work from the power center side of the thing, I've created another definition over here, which is closer to the reality, uh, in somewhere in the middle between single table and everything is a table. And you see that I get 70 tables, and by that I'm able to reduce the total number of leaves or the total number of uh, columns within those tables into uh, 6,850 uh, number of columns, which is something that we found to still be working within Power Center. Once we are done modeling the, uh, um, the database for the um, relational, for the hierarchical data, we're going into step number two, taking now the Excel that we generated and the XML that we generated in the previous step, and we are running them in order to create the runtime objects. The runtime objects will have two, two components. One of them is going to be the power center mapping, which will take the XML, push it into a UDT object, which will run a DT service that will do a mapping between one XML and another XML, 
and then the secondary XML will come out and will be pushed out into Power Center to load it to the target structures, which are going to be the database or a, a multiple flat files. So again, when this process is done, I can go to the result folder of the second service, and I got this Power Center XML and the folder called XML to RVD, which really represents a DT service that will be executed in, in runtime. That service can then be deployed to the service DB, and the Power Center object can be imported into Power Center. We do this. As you can see, it has a single source, which really is just a pointer to a file, and all those targets, one for every table that I decided within the Excel that I would, or every object within the Excel that I wanted to, to have a table for. At that point, I'm doing add everything and push it into this folder. Once I'm done over here, I can go to my designer and now I can take a look into my objects, take the mapping in. And this is the structure of what's going to happen. The source will read from file it, a path to the actual file that needs to be processed, the XML. And then that is going to be pushed into a DT service that will run the service that was generated called XML to RDB. What this service does is a mapping between the source XML and an XSD, which is the relational hierarchy that also has been created automatically with the specific ports that are required for a specific table. And based Again, based on the definition within the Excel. And then it also creates the mapping between each and every one of those structures and the specific table corresponding to it. The next step is obviously to generate a workflow from that. I can do that automatically from here, from Power Center. And then I can go into um, the workflow manager. And technically, I should be able to execute that. Obviously, since this mapping has, in this case, a, a many tables, what I would have to do is to bump the memory um, for it to be able to execute properly. I'll change that to be 100 MB. And for the sake of this um, um, demo, what I'll do is I'll change the target definition to be a flat file instead of the um, database that it's currently using. And in addition, I'm going to remove most of the tables from here so that I don't need I, I wouldn't need so much memory for it. 
Now let me execute the workflow. It's already pointed to one of the files that I have placed for it. As you can see, now when the process is done, it has read one file and created two rows for this specific uh, table that got populated and 10 rows for this address type table that got populated. Other rows in, in this specific case did not have data and obviously I deleted um, most of the rows out of the 70 something rows, I only left like maybe 10. Um, in this case, files were created on my file system, but um, in, had those have been tables in the database, the data would have been in the database. This is more or less it. The important point to take from here are that the process is completely automatic. It creates the end-to-end -end process automatically. The only intervention in the middle is for the uh, um, business user to really define the hierarchy. It's not specific to a code, although in this specific case I used a code, and it's not specific to XML, because as I said, I can take EDI methods represented using some XSD, and then I can apply that in same logic on top of that XSD. And once the process is done, although you see the structure over here to be almost flat, it doesn't show the hierarchy between the tables. The hierarchy is being preserved within the data as in, in IDs or parent, child, and keys that are being inserted in addition to the um, values as columns for each of those tables as needed. The package for that is owned by the B2B IPS organization at the moment. And if you'd like to get more information or obtain the package, feel free to contact um, either myself or Peter Chen or any of the other members of the, um, of the B2B vertical team within the IPS organization. Thank you.